I'm Kyle McCormick. Are you tired of hearing the political squabbling of the presidential campaign? I know how you feel. But today, we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It's time to get excited about trade policy. With NAFTA and international trade in general being such big factors in this election season, I decided to get the perspective of some politically active students. Labor standards that require a certain you know, wage that they get paid or have environmental standards that um, you know, don't allow their resources or their country to be, you know, like the pollution is rampant, et cetera, et cetera. And so I think that it could have a very substantial effect on the lives of many people. You know, maybe like overall not so much, but I, I mean, I think on an individual level certainly it would. And I think that's an important, that's an important thing to remember, that it's, it's not just this country and this country, that there are people that live in these countries and they're affected by these trade deals on an individual level, and it's something to, to remember. Economically, being able for an individual or for a company to to make policies for themselves of how they're going to trade based on when it comes you know the bottom line um, capitalism works we've seen that over and over so economically uh, it's it's very it's ridiculous for them to say oh we need to bring labor unions and environmental unions or environmental think tanks into the table in order to help manage these policies that's just creating more special interests and ultimately um, as we've seen whenever different special interests are brought to the table, it's going to bring about policy that isn't for free trade, it's for managed trade. It's good that we have relations with other countries and trade can help us do that. However, we need to make sure we're not exploiting these other countries, we're not exploiting the workers in the other countries, and also that like our workers are able to benefit from the trade and are not affected in any sort of bad way from the trade at all. Uh, if you want to be in pro-environment and pro-labor, you would get rid of government regulation and go for laissez-faire capitalism. That's pro-environment, pro-labor. To get a faculty member's perspective, we spoke with Vinnie Agarwal, professor in the political science department and at the Haas School of Business. Bilateral trade agreements are very important because they're the new fashion, if you'd like. Uh, after, 19, after 2001, the United States has been actively pursuing bilateral trade agreements, which means essentially that the United States negotiates with another country, a single country. Examples of that include an agreement we have with, now with Singapore, with Australia, with Chile and we've been with Oman, actually Morocco, so we've negotiated a number of bilateral trade agreements. This is a real break from what U.S. policy traditionally pursued, which was to pursue multilateral trade agreements under the auspices of the GATT, the General Agreement on Tariffs and Trade, which was created in 1947, and then subsequently under the WTO, the World Trade Organization, after 1995. A lot of this uh, concern among the American public that they're losing out from globalization, jobs are being lost with the rise of India, China, and other developing countries, I think people became frustrated with the WTO process going very slowly, and the U.S. began to then pursue this negotiation of bilateral trade agreements country by country. I think what's happening with respect to the Obama campaign and the Clinton campaign is that these are two intelligent individuals but they have to pander to whichever state they're operating and so when they go to Pennsylvania where there have been large job losses or even earlier on in Michigan and, uh, and other places which are old industrial economies in some respect where you had a large auto industry, a large steel industry, it's no surprise that they try to appeal to workers who have lost their jobs, people who are unemployed trade agreements which have provisions for adjustment assistance that have some labor standards and environmental standards is not completely wrong. The problem is that these things get twisted. So look at environmental standards, for example. They're often used as a protectionist device to keep out imports. Uh, labor standards are often used to keep out lower priced imports when the whole basis of comparative advantage is based on whether or not you have lower wages in some respects. At least that part of comparative advantage is based on that. On the one hand, it's very important to have open and, and free trade and open markets, but on the other hand, we do have to have these adjustment mechanisms. I really wish that uh, Obama, Senators Obama and Clinton would spend more time explaining to the American public how these mechanisms will work, how there will be a transformation, and less time dumping on trade. A naive view of free trade, however, which we do see from the Republican Party, is that everyone will ad automatically adjust. The notion that steel workers and auto workers will transform themselves into nurses 
which is a very high paying profession these days and now we're being forced to import nurses if you like from other countries around the world but these kinds of adjustment mechanisms have not been discussed and this is true whether you look at technological change or trade so I think the way that, that these politicians have addressed this issue both from the Republican Party and the Democratic Party is entirely misleading because it's very difficult to have an intelligent debate and what's really sad about the current debate is you have this dumping on particular agreements or, or support of particular agreements without a well thought out understanding of a coherent economic package that is politically sustainable and that can be developed in the Congress and that we really need to move forward on instead of simply pandering to particular groups that are at any one time looking for some solace but that's not really the way to have a good trade policy or a good macroeconomic policy. I'm always optimistic that we can move beyond the current political debate.